Hey gamers, welcome to my tissue culture lab. Today I'm going to show you how to make your own tissue culture lab. If you're looking for more of a beginner setup, I recommend checking out my Magnum Opus DIY tissue culture for under $200. Let's get into it. Now, when designing your laboratory, you first need to decide where you want to put it. Ideally, you want to choose a room with no carpet and no live plants. My room's not great because I have both of those things. Before we get into the equipment that you're going to need for your laboratory, I would like to thank Atlas VPN for sponsoring this video. Since I'm constantly on the run from big tissue culture, wait. I like using a VPN to keep all my devices safe and secure. They have servers literally all over the world, so you can choose where you wanna browse from and even unlock media that is not currently in your country. Robert and I recently slogged through 200 episodes of Naruto only to find out that the last like 20 episodes are only in Japanese. And after a failed Duolingo attempt, I realized that I can just change my VPN location and get access to the English dubs. Atlas VPN offers the most affordable affordable online protection for only $1.70 per month, plus six months extra for free and a 30 day money back guarantee. Protect your privacy and get the many benefits of using Atlas VPN for a very low price. You can take this deal by clicking on the link in my description below this video. And now let's get into the equipment. So the biggest piece of equipment you are going to need is the laminar flow hood. The flow hood basically creates a sterile work area for you to handle your cultures in. Mine is a 24 inch pure air flow from a company called Air Science. Plant Cell Technology also sells flow hoods. And if you're interested, I do have a code with them for 10% off your order, which helps a little bit with the cost. I also have a hot plate that doubles as a magnetic stirrer. Yes, mine looks absolutely foul, but to be honest, I think you could definitely get away with just buying a magnetic stirrer without the hot plate component to save a little bit of money. I use the magnetic stirrer when I make tissue culture media and I also use it when I sterilize X plants. If you go to a real laboratory, they'll probably have an orbital shaker that agitates the X plants to sterilize them. You'll also need a scale that measures to 0.00 grams. This can be purchased for relatively inexpensively from Amazon or there's of course much more expensive versions that you can also buy. I would not recommend overspending on the scale. The last large piece of equipment that I use is the Bacti Zapper. The Bacti Zapper is an infrared sterilizer that heats up super hot so that you can sterilize your tools like your scissors and your forceps or your scalpel. Alternatively, you can also use a glass bead sterilizer or an alcohol lamp which are both much less expensive options. The alcohol lamp can be dangerous, especially if you are keeping an open container of alcohol right next to it, which if you're doing tissue culture and using it for that purpose, you probably are. This video is for people who are not my landlord only. If you are my landlord, please click off this video. Okay, now that he's gone, put your hand up if you have ever started an alcohol fire. My name is Lore and I have started an alcohol fire. Everybody be cool. We all make mistakes, be cool. For that reason, I really don't recommend working with an alcohol lamp. There is a huge secondhand market for lab equipment. Sometimes universities and research labs actually give away their old equipment. I actually have met someone who's gotten a laminar flow hood this way, so it is definitely possible and make sure to check that before you spend a ton of money on this stuff. To make tissue culture media, you will need some tools. A one liter glass container. I already had these containers. I didn't buy these for tissue culture. I bought them to try to grow scoby in my house, a culture of scoby. If you don't know what that is, then you probably smell a lot better than I do. You'll also need pour boats to measure your ingredients on and pipettes. As far as pipettes go, you have a few options. You can get some really cheap disposable pipettes from Amazon. You can get some expensive disposable pipettes, or you can get autoclavable pipette tips and a Pipetor. I have two of them because I have two sizes. I just bought these from Amazon. Everything that I talk about in this video, for the most part, will be linked below, by the way. You have your box, and this whole thing can go into an autoclave to sterilize it. You just press it in there, and you just rotate it for how much liquid you want to pick up. 
Speaking of pressure cooking, you are also going to need a pressure cooker. You might be thinking right now, can I use an Instapot? No, 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 no. You cannot. And Instapot only gets up to 10 or 12 PSI, I forget which, but that's not high enough to properly sterilize tissue culture media or lab equipment that need to go under the flow hood while you're working. I recommend just picking up one of those big classic pressure cookers. I have two of them so that I can autoclave media and also the tools that I need to do tissue culture next to each other at the same time. And I pretty much do that every night and then every morning I do the tissue culture. I'm actually probably going to get two more pressure cookers pretty soon, so I'll have four total. I might be the only person to own four pressure cookers who is not on some sort of list. FBI, open up! The ingredients to make tissue culture media vary from plant to plant, but for houseplants, it's relatively consistent. You'll generally need a few things. One, mirashigi and scooge. Sucrose, which is just a fancy way of saying kitchen sugar. Some sort of gelling agent to make solid media. So either agar or gelling gum. I prefer gelling gum because it's clear and it looks better for Instagram photos. Agar just has kind of a yellowish cloudiness to it that is less aesthetic. The last thing you need to make tissue culture media will be plant growth regulators. The PGRs that you need to do tissue culture depend on the type of plant that you are trying to micro propagate. As far as containers for tissue culture go, you want to use plastic containers made of polypropylene and also make sure that the lids are also made of polypropylene. That way they can go in the autoclave. The last thing that you need for tissue culture media is a pH meter. It is incredibly important to adjust the pH of your tissue culture media. I've had three pH meters over the past year because I am a menace to society and I keep breaking the probes on all of them. So far, this one has been my favorite one. You wanna add a few drops also of KCL solution to maintain the probe, but just follow the instructions that whichever pH meter you choose comes with. So at this point we have our lab all set up and we have all the ingredients that we need to make media. Before you work underneath the flow hood with your cultures, you need to decontaminate the surfaces. I used to use 10% bleach to surface sterilize, but I just don't like the smell of it. So I have switched over to surface sterilizing with 70% alcohol. You want to use 70% instead of 90%. 90% evaporates too fast to do a good job surface sterilizing. While you're working under the flow hood, you will need some tools. Forceps, a scalpel, or scissors. I use scissors <laughs> instead of a scalpel. Some people say scissors cause more contamination. To that I say, here's a $50,000 medical bill. I recently watched a video of a woman touring us through her family's woody plant nursery. She did mention something interesting, which is that they only use scissors and no one uses a scalpel in her whole laboratory. She is using her scissors and her tweezers. We don't use the, um, the knives, the scalpels or anything. Which leads me to believe that I am not the only goofball who stabbed themselves with a scalpel. You'll also need a stainless steel coffee strainer. This is what I use to rinse the explants after they've been cleaned in the bleach. And then a surgical tray. This is what I do the tissue culture on. Before working under the flow hood, I pressure cook all of my tools. Here is a full list of everything that I put into the pressure cooker every single time I'm going to do tissue culture. I wrap the containers with saran wrap to seal them. You can buy it pre-cut or you can just cut it yourself with a PVC pipe cutter. For shelves, I just use some wire racks that I got from Amazon. There are lights specifically made for tissue culture. These are not them. Francisco from Plant Cell Tech gave me some recommendations recently for plant lights, so I'm going to put those below and I will eventually be purchasing them. I think that's it. The only thing standing between you and doing tissue culture is four to $5,000 of cold hard cash or $200 if you follow my beginner tutorial. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to try tissue culture for the first time, I do have a code with plant cell technology for 10% off your order, which is plants in jars, all in caps. I'm also on Instagram, so make sure to check that out. Bye.